have the cow I guess my first question would be have the Cowboys exceeded expectations for the year? Up to this point, yes, they've had an excellent season. Yes. Yes. Okay. And that's that's really where I would, that's really just where my 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 first thought goes. And again, the season's not over, and they have the and you are always right when you say expectations change. Sure. Yeah, you know, they do. They have to. But the following teams have exceeded the, Cow- the Cowboys. I think we would all agree. First off, everyone basically in this whole city was wrong in the off season. Everybody. Only the diehard homers were like Randy Gregory is a druggie. Amari Cooper is always hurt. Leo Collins is overrated. Uh, go Stephen Jones. Stephen Jones is public enemy number one. The, the the most negative hatred of a Cowboys offseason we can remember in 10 or 11 years. So all of us were incorrect. Everyone. But before game one, if you said they were choppy, did predict, predict an awesome record for them. I, I think, think it was just 10 and 7. No. No, no, no. Was it higher? Yes. 11 and 6? Yeah, no. Oh, Better, 12 and 5? 12, 12 and 5. They would dominate and win the NFC East, lapping everybody else. Now, that part of it is wrong. I think you expected a little bit better quarterback play, but... I, I also think, didn't expect Philadelphia to be 12 and 1. But the Cowboys' closeness to a championship is a lot warmer than I think any of us would have said before game one. Because of the way also the NFC has played out. Is that all fair? Yeah. That's yes. all fair. I think, okay. I think everything yeah. about that's fair. All right. The following teams have met or exceeded their preseason win totals from Vegas. Atlanta, Jets, Giants, Minnesota, Philly, Seattle, and us. Got a couple teams that are right there, like Detroit's on the on the number right now. They gotta they gotta get that extra half win. Uh but we're the only team that I think that's actually the sky is falling. That's, we're the only team in the league that that that, that the, the the publications at the sky is falling, not acting like this season isn't already like a massive success, because we're the only team that lost a quarterback for a large portion of that of that time, and yeah, like the end result is going to dictate Mike McCarthy's future, and it's going to dictate how we look at this season, but. You know, if Brian Dayball and Kevin or Kevin O'Connell and Nick Sirianni are in the running for coach of the year, then so does Mike McCarthy need to be. Sure. Uh, Agreed. Because he is, yeah, because like he has also exceeded expectations, and he's the only one that's had to do it with Cooper Rush. But I think there's a double standard when it comes to the Cowboys and 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 the expectations uh, because of the most followed team, because of the most covered team, because they're the only team that anybody cares about. Now. Like seriously, like, like the Cowboys are a local team for everybody. Because there's fans in your city, and the national media is going to talk about them. But I don't know, man. It's just like, uh, this is one of the most overachieving teams in the NFL this year based on losing a quarterback and having the same record. That I think we just lose sight of, of how good this season has been. And then I see an article that says, do the Cowboys need to win over the Jags to reassert contender status? And I'm like, I don't know, you're 10-3. and three. Like, do you have to reassert anything? I think that Cowboys fans are just at the point that Mavericks fans were at in like 08, though. Mm. It's like, I don't care about your 50-win season. Yes. I fair. Fair, 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 fair. And so yes. they're not going to celebrate them being 10-3, and three, which is interesting because last year they did get suckered in. And I don't want to say suckered in, but they were really excited about all the regular season success. And you had a lot of people say... I'm not going to get excited about regular season success ever again. And I kind of was like, mm, I'll believe that when I see it. But you're really seeing. I think there are a lot of fans who are not getting super pumped about being 10 and 3. I agree. They don't seem to care as much. And I applaud them for it. Yeah. I applaud them for it. I think, you know, we, we just have this difference in approach of, okay, like, you've had a very good regular season. You still, you know, have played a, a tremendously weak schedule. And... You got to have some playoff success. You got you to have a little bit of playoff success. Uh, let, let's see some really, really nice sound wins over high quality teams. Let's see what happens Christmas Eve against Philadelphia instead of the Lions and the Bears and the Giants and Houston and Indianapolis. And I applaud I applaud the standard. I, I don't think it's fans being spoiled. It's like, okay, at the end of the... We're one of those teams... If you don't get to the conference championship game, then it's going to be looked upon as a failure. 
We haven't had the Mike McCarthy job status discussion yet here on the show. I think we do need to. Um, but you have always just valued the regular season more uh, than, than most people. And I think there's a lot of value in that because, you know, you get fired. So Mike McCarthy get fired if they lose round one if they go 12 and 5. Yeah. You know, I know that you, you're you going to argue no. But what do we all believe about the Cowboys? Are they a true championship contender? Are they a top three threat to win it all? And if the answer is no, then I think we can pick them apart. I think that's fair. That's my take. You can have a higher standard. That's fine. Yeah, look, I mean, are they a top three contender to win it all from the NFC? Yes. I think we all agree on that, right? In the yes. NFC. They're third, but yeah. <laughs> Whatever, wherever they are. Yeah, no, I'm just saying they, they are top three, but that it's their third. Which means, just, or, let me rephrase it. What's the gap in the NFL? How far is the gap between KC, Buffalo, Philly, you know, yeah, technically, yeah, we're top three in the NFC. But where, but where, where do fans really think the Cowboys are in terms of that gap of being a Super Bowl winner? What do, you, what do you think? And if there's a tremendous gap, which I believe there is, then yeah, play better. Don't sleepwalk against the AFC South. Let's see a little bit, maybe, of a statement against Jacksonville. That's my approach. I don't think there's anything I, wrong with that. I, I don't because there's, there's a gap. Yeah, I think there is a gap. But let me ask you this. Like we're not on the top tier level of contender. No, we're not. In terms of being a great football team? We're not. But so to me, there's 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 of those three teams you listed, there's two levels within those teams. It's KC Buffalo, then there's a gap. And then Philly. Okay, I, I I think Philly is on that level. Well, talent wise as a whole, yeah, they 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 probably are. Okay. Um but what are the category we judge? Quarterback. Like their quarterback is not nearly as good as Allen or Mahomes. Right. Like let me let me like so let's let's think of it this way from the Cowboys' perspective. If the Cowboys traded Dak Prescott for Patrick Mahomes, are they not in a better position than the Chiefs currently are, or in the same position? Same or better. And I think that that's then that's the issue. It's not the team. It's just that, you know, one but guy's got but, Patrick Mahomes and the other one doesn't. Yeah, but this defense isn't isn't as special as everyone thought earlier in the year. They're not. Right. They're not a great we're, – we're not San Francisco's class. People thought the Cowboys had the best defense in the league along with Buffalo early on. We now have some questions in the secondary. What's going to happen at right tackle? Like, there's, there's legitimate questions. Everyone has these issues. Michael Irvin's big question yesterday was run defense. We're, we're just not in – that top level conversation. So that's why we feel like, mm -hmm. like we haven't met the expectations or maybe the expectations are wrong, but there's still opportunity. There's still opportunity for them to get better and seize this wide open chance in the, in, in the conference. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. And when we talk about those gaps, I think, you're talking about Kansas City and Buffalo are on a different tier. And then you go maybe just a step down. Then you have Philly and San Francisco. And then I think there's a smaller gap than between Kansas City, Buffalo, and Philly. Then I think there's a smaller gap from those two in the NFC to Dallas. But you're also right, Chop. It comes down to the quarterback. Because of the questions about Dak Prescott, if your defense isn't going to be special like San Francisco's plan and your quarterback is inconsistent, it's it's hard to have you yeah. in that in that first class. Yeah, like in order, and to, he is inconsistent. In order to be, yeah, in order to beat uh, Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen in the postseason, you, or 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 in general, you're going to need to have that player have a have a slightly off night, and your quarterback's going to have to have a, a a game, man. Like really, and and your defense is going to step up. Yep, and the other players on your team are going to step up. Like that's what that's what it takes, and that that's what makes it very very difficult. Um, for them to win, uh, for anybody to beat those teams. Now, now teams are like, like you know, look, Tampa destroyed Kansas City in the playoffs. Uh, the Bengals came back and beat Patrick Mahomes on the road. Well, I also, I, th I think the the best part of what you wrote last night what? is the past Super Bowl champs and where they were at this yeah. point in the season because this made me second guess my opinion of the way that they're playing right now okay so i just went back and looked at some recent ones like why right last... now if you agree with me that they're not playing sharp 
and that they're kind of, you know, sleepwalking. They should have been playing better against the Giants, the Texans, and the Colts. This proves that that opinion that I've shared is incorrect. All right, so I went and looked at just, I just randomly took, the, you know, a couple of the last relative you know, few champs. The Rams lost three straight last November. You know, they also won five in a row immediately after that. And they, they dropped their final game of the year to San Fran in overtime. But nobody, but going into the playoffs last year, were the, were the Rams everyone's favorite? Nope. No. We were even with them. It was like Cowboys Rams are equal. Right. Tampa, when they won, they were had to go on the road to New Orleans and Green Bay. They had lost three of four in November, and they were thought of as the third best team in the conference. Now, there was a question about Drew Brees' arm, but the Saints had worked them in the two games they played them this year. In 2018, New England lost back-to-back -back December games to Miami and Pittsburgh. They never lost to Pittsburgh, ever. They lost back-to-back -back games. They didn't lose again the rest of the year. In 2015, Denver changed quarterbacks in Week 17. Uh, went back to Manning. Not a single person even thought they were going to beat Pittsburgh in the divisional round because of Manning's arm. Like, I, I, the point there is, like, being a contender Week 2 of December is not the most important thing in the world. Like, you know, pl playing well down the stretch or just getting healthy for the playoffs and getting on a good little hot run, I think is far more important. And because that's far more important, I think that's also why you have a lot of people who aren't super jazzed about 10 and 3. Like, bringing it back to the original point, it's because people recognize, like, okay, let me see what happens in January. Let me see what happens in February. Because if the Cowboys go one and done again, it's... It's it's all irrelevant. Yep. None of it matters. Nobody's talking about how excited they were that they went thirteen and four or whatever. It's like the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, that, that's the way they're feeling in Phoenix, right? Oh yep. yeah. If you don't win the championship, the season is a disappointment and a failure. That's the way it's looked upon. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think we've reached regular season status of Phoenix well, with an NFL right. comparison. No, and 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 they made the NBA Finals, right? So they yeah. so they, they've already eclipsed what we've done. I mean, yeah, did we talk about how excited we were in 2016 that the Rangers were, like, the best team in the AL and then they got swept? Like, nobody was ex nobody was happy with that. I think you're right, though, with that Mavs analogy, right? It was Mavs, Sacramento, Portland, all trying to catch the Lakers for years with those mm -hmm. Dirk teams. And it was like, okay, great regular season. You're really fun to watch. You don't have the playoff formula and you come up short. Mm -hmm.